Okay, let's look at vectors. Now, vectors, they represent a lot of interesting aspects in mathematics, which a lot of it is used in calculus and through physics as well. So what is a, so what is a vector um, or vectors, I should say? So where are they? Well, if you ever look at the wind, you know, that's associated with what we call the weather, you kind of see these, you know, these kind of wind currents, these kind of wind, you know, aspects of what we call, um, like, you know, kind of what's going on with the wind. If the wind's going this way, this way, this way, what's the strength of that wind? Well, think of this also as maybe current, maybe waves. You know, waves of the ocean have a you know, have a current, and so kind of something like this. You have these waves, and you know that really matters of like undercurrents or how the strength of these, how much energy these waves, waves or currents kind of have effect. And if you want to, you can kind of draw some arrows onto these that kind of represent they're going in this this fashion. But the reason why we look at these kind of vectors is because it's hard. We want to we we want to describe the motion. So we want to uh, what we call describe, um, kind of describe the motion of something. We want to describe the motion. Motion is like the the force, the energy that kind of puts us away. Um, Maybe we we'll want to see it in a 3D realm. So we want to kind of see where does it, where does this this vectors or where does this wave work in the of the in the three dimensional realm of things. And so here's a question for you: If I I drove 65 miles per hour down the freeway, now you might be wondering, okay, down the freeway. Now what is that like? Where? I mean, where down the freeway? Is that north, south, west? I mean, did you drive north? Did you drive uh, east? Did you drive south? Did you drive west? I mean, you need a direction. So kind of bottom line here is a, a vector. Um, vector, a vector has both um, magnitude and direction. I will explain what magnitude is. Uh, magnitude is kind of like the speed. It's kind of like the speed of your going. So 65 miles per hour is the speed. The direction is, well, what direction? North, east, south, and west. So that's kind of what you need. So a vector has to have a speed and a direction. That's the definition of a vector. Is you need both. Okay. And just kind of pinpoint this when you we hear speed, you're thinking about like you know how much, you know how much, how much speed are you giving it to? Miles per hour, feet a second. So they can be miles per hour, feet a second. You know all kinds of those. Well, you also need the direction. And kind of like what I said before, is that you have your north, south, east, and west direction. All right. So let's give you an example of what vector is uh, on this bar. So let's do an example. So what if I said, what if I went from this point to here? And I said, let's start at A and let's end at B. So I'm going to go from A and I'm going to go to B. And you have to make sure that you follow this because if you go backwards, it's not going to work. So let's call this vector with a little arrow. So this is like the notation for vector. It's like it's a V for vector, and there's a little kind of looks like a little arrow, like a half an arrow. So this is kind of like an arrow. Okay, that means it's in this direction. And why don't we call this kind of like the initial? So the initial point, that's where it starts. And where it goes is kind of, think of this as the terminal. Terminal point. Remember, think of like the unit circle. The unit circle has something like this. So it starts from the initial, it goes to a point. So this is kind of how you would read it. 
you're saying vector from A to B, from A to B. Okay, what if I said from here to here? So what if this was C and D? So if this was C and D, this, um, let's call this vector W. So this is gonna be from C to D is this vector. And you know we can name these as vector that, and we can call these vector that. So these can kind of represent these two vectors. So what we're gonna do with these two kind of vectors is that we're gonna kind of play around with the links and kind of do some algebraic activities with these because that's kind of what we're trying to accomplish here. Okay, hope that makes sense. So let's do, let's do some more here. So let's do some math. So let's do the math. Uh, the math. So let's kind of, we can use these if you want. We can use these, these kind of these points. Um, just to let you know that these vectors can also go in this direction. They can also go negative. So you can also have a negative vector. So I don't want you just get, I don't want to get misled here that vectors can always be positive. They can also be negative. Okay, we're going to figure this out here in a minute. So why don't we say let vector V be something with P slash Q. So we're going to call these another vectors and we're going to call a vector but from P to Q. So kind of like these up here, but we're going to use P and Q. Well, let's call this another vector. Let's call it W, but let's call it from R to S. And if you want to draw these, so let's draw these. Kind of, so you have something like this, you have this, you have P to Q, and maybe you have uh, R to S. So now I don't want you to get misled that these are the same direction. Now they, this one can be going up like, these can kind of go like this. These two can represent up here, just to let you know that. So they don't always have to go in the same, the same, uh, the same direction. Okay, so let's do something with these. Okay, a couple things. I want you to understand that you have these properties called the commutative. Okay, when you when you hear commutative, think of you can go this way and that way. Commutative says it's like a commute, like a like a a, a com, uh, commute. So when you're commuting, you're kind of going back and then you're going back and forth, a commute. So what if I said for this, if I said let this vector plus this vector, well, that can also be this way. So you can add vectors that will also be the same thing. So if you add these two vectors, you would get the two vectors the same. Hey, that's not too hard. Um, moving on. Let's. What about the associative property? Now, the associative property. You probably heard this in math, but we gotta have a third vector. A third vector. So let's do this. Let's call. Uh, let's. Um, I don't know. Let's use u to be t slash z. Okay. Let's let another vector. So we're gonna have. We're gonna add another vector onto these. So we still have our two vectors here, but for the associative property, we can add one more vector and I can show you what that means. And so T to Z, so hopefully that you kind of see that this is uh, T and this is Z. And this is that vector that goes like that. Well, let's call the associative property. Remember the associative property says that if I have, uh, if I add all my vectors, add all these vectors up, and I'm going to actually do the same thing here. I'm going to show you what I'm do, what I'm going to do. So I just added these vectors up, and I made them equal. Here's why I made them equal. And I'm going to kind of use a different color here to help you out. If I put a parentheses with these, that's the same thing of putting the parentheses with this. So I can say that according to the associative property, if I add vectors up, it doesn't matter how I add them, I will still get the same, the same vector. It doesn't matter how I add them, I will still get the same thing. Well, that is, that's good. 
And you're probably thinking, where do you, what do you use this stuff at? Well, if I were to draw some of these vectors, if I were to draw you a picture, so if I would have said, okay, here's vector W and here's vector, uh, vector U. Well, if I said, okay, let's make this vector V and let's make this vector W. So what I'm trying to show you here is that if I have these two vectors, they make what we call a parallelogram. Uh, parallelogram, parallelogram, parallelogram. Parallelogram, remember, kind of looks like this. You know, these are uh, these are parallel, parallel, and these are parallel. And we can kind of do this with what we call a resultant vector. So we can say that this vector goes this way. This vector should be parallel to that one. Well, this is u, and this is v. We're not necessarily saying that these are the same, but we're trying to say that they should be parallel as well. And so this vector that kind of goes in the middle is what we call the resultant vector. We can discuss that later. But we can have three vectors that kind of do some application here, which we're going to discover. Well, let's do something about what we call a zero vector. Now, a zero vector, think of it that it's, it's really, it's a magnitude. So think of like a mag. Remember, magnitude is your speed. So I should, I'm going to say uh, speed is zero. Is zero. So a zero vector means that you have a vector of zero. So maybe you want to take a point, and let's call that I don't know. Let's call it P. And that point is just a description of a vector, but it's nothing because there's zero. So what if I said, okay, I'm going to take vector uh, uh, v plus zero vector. Well, I'm still going to get that v. If I take w vector and add zero vector, I'm still going to get w because really I don't do anything. It's like adding zero. So, for example, if I have $3 and I add zero, I still have $3. That's kind of what a zero vector is. It just doesn't do anything to it. Okay? All right, keep going here. Well, what about negative vectors? Because I think I mentioned that before, and you have what we call negative vectors. Well, think of it this way. If I add my vector v plus, what if I go opposite that same vector? So here's a kind of a picture. What if I go this way on v? But then I kind of go backwards and we're going to call negative v. Well, to kind of tell you what this is, doesn't this, this is going to be zero because you're kind of going this way, but you're going back that way. So you kind of start with, you're going to have to have a zero as a, a negative vector. Okay, hopefully that makes a little bit more sense and into that information. All right, so let's take what we call um, a scalar, a scalar. Now, a scalar multiple, a scalar multiple, a scalar, so S-C-A-L-R, a scalar, think of a scalar is kind of like a, a multiplication, so a multiplication. And what if I said three times that vector? What if I said three times that vector? Well, what this means is the scalar says, I'm going to take a, a, a three times a vector. So I'm going to take three times that vector. That means whatever that vector is, you're going to multiply it by three. So it's going to be three times as long. So a scalar is just saying, I'm going to take a magnitude or a speed and say, I'm going to multiply it by that vector. Now, I want you to be very careful here. If I take my scalar and I times it by zero, I want you to remember it's going to be zero. So be careful. Okay. So let's um, think about this. So here's a couple examples to kind of review what we have. Um, 
why don't we do this? Why don't we go like this, make this vector. I wanna make this 3V. So that's three times a vector. Okay, and then I'm gonna take that vector, I'm gonna take that 3V, and then I wanna add one V to it. I wanna add one V to it. Well, I want you to do some multiple, uh, some adding here. You're gonna have four Vs. Okay, let's do another example. What if I say take the same thing and I'm going to go 3v, but then I'm going to add subtract of 3v. And I'm going to subtract 3v. Well, aren't you going to have 0v? Okay. Um, let's do another example. What if I had um, 2v? I'm going to add. 3w and I'm going to add 1u. And these are these are our same vectors that we had. These are our same vectors we had up here. Okay. Oops. And then I said, okay, what if I add 3w and minus a w or a minus a u. So I want to kind of complete this a little bit. And you're probably thinking, what do I do? Well, co remember combine like terms in algebra? Remember combine like terms? You're gonna combine the, the certain ones. Well, remember this one and this one? They cancel out because they're zero. Well, think of this one and this one. You're gonna add those together, you get six. So here's your final product. That's your, that's, that's your final block. So you can only add the vectors with the vectors. It's like combining like terms. Okay, combining like terms. You can only combine the vectors that um, you need. Okay. All right. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense there. Um, what I want to do now is, let's see if I have any room on this. I probably don't. What I want to do is kind of take what we call a position vector. A position, position vector. Okay, let's do this. We're going to start at the origin. We're going to start at the origin. Okay, so that's zero, zero. And we're going to take a point. And let's call that point vector 1, vector 2. Okay. Well, what this is, is called a position vector. And kind of what this means is that if you take an x and y coordinate system, and you kind of go like that, this is what we call the position function. This is kind of like a that that this is like that point right there at the origin. This is what we call a, pos a position vector. It positions itself at the origin and it goes off to a point. It goes off to a point. It goes off to a point. Okay. Now I want you to be very clear here that um, if this is a point. If I say I want to find a vector, well, we, we're going to try to do that in a minute here. Okay. So let's do an example. You know, always do an example is always a way to kind of enlighten this a little bit to kind of see what we're doing. So what if I said find the position vector of P1, P2, if P1 is a point negative, negative 1, comma 2, and that second point is 4, comma 6. So we're going to try to find the position function of two points. Now you're probably thinking, what, what, what do I do? How, how do I approach this? I'm going to say graph. I'm going to say graph. 
that's the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of get a kind of get a picture of what's going on. Kind of get a picture about what's going on. So if remember, these are two points, by the way. Remember, these are two points. All right, these are two points. So let's graph these two points and see what we have. So they go up to six. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So negative one, one, all the way to four. So our first point one is going to be at negative one up to two. So we can call that point one. Point two is going to be four comma six. All right. Now, remember, look up here. We're going to go from point one to point two. So this is our vector. That's our vector from these two points. Now, what we're trying to do is trying to find a position vector given the given these two points. And here's the way to do this. We have to have a little formula. Have to have a little formula. We're going to take this and we're going to draw kind of like a little. Uh, like an inequality, but this actually stands for a vector position. And we're going to go and take the x2 minus x sub 1. And then we're going to take the y2 minus y1. You can kind of see what we're trying to do here. We're, it's almost like the distance formula. It's almost like the distance formula without the square root. So we're going to take these two points these two points and we're going to subtract your x's and subtract their y's and that's going to how we're going to get the position uh, uh, vector so let's go ahead and do that we take our point position vector um, x2 minus x sub 1 remember um, we're going from p1 to p2 so x2 is going to be uh, let's see, uh, 4 minus so four minus, oh, negative one. Be careful here, be, be careful here because you're gonna have to put a parenthesis. I hope you know why, because you're subtracting the X's. You're subtracting the X's. And then comma, then you're gonna go six minus two. Remember, you're subtracting the Y values. So if you do this correctly, your vector should be, well, that's going to be positive, so that's going to be 5, and that's going to be 4. And here's your position vector. Now you're probably thinking, I don't really know what we did. I want you to draw this. I want you to draw, draw this point at 0, 0. Remember what a position function was. A position function was at the origin. At the origin. So let's take this. And draw it at the origin. So at the origin, now let's go five and four. So we're gonna go five and we're going to go to four. And look what you have. You you have the same, the same vector. You have the same vector. And I want you to I want you to notice something too. Do you remember y equals mx plus b? If these are parallel, that means their slopes are going to be the same. That means their slope is going to be the same. So that's kind of how you would find a vector, a position vector. And we're going to take this information and we're going to extend this to some word problems eventually. All right, so let's do some practice. So let's do some practice. Um, example. P, see, P1, point one, or we can just call, it, you can also just call it P2, or sorry, uh, just P, if you want. Um, let's do maybe three comma zero. And let's let's write Q for another point. It doesn't, they don't have to be the same points. 
Um, let's do these two. So let's find a, a position vector between these two. Now, what you could do, since we're since we're inexperienced with this, at what I would try to do first is kind of draw a picture. What the heck does this look like as you begin this? When you get more experience with this, you don't have to draw a picture because you know what you're working with. You're proving this to yourself. So let's go ahead and draw this, and I think this will help you if you do draw this, just for now. So we're going to go 3, we're going to go to 2. So there's P. And then we're going to go to 5, and then we're going to go to 6, which is way up here, right? Okay, there's your Q. Well, our position vector should be the same. Our position vector should be the same. Should be parallel. Should be the same, same slope. All right. Now, as you do this, you might want to go, okay, here's x sub 1, y1. Here's x sub 2, y2. Because remember, you're going to subtract them. And that's always, you want to make sure that you go from p to q. If you go backwards, you're going to get kind of a negative number, I do believe. So I always want to make sure you stick to this. So here we go. So we're going to go that. X sub 2 is 5 minus 5 minus 3. I'm just going to rewrite it out because I know you can see it. And then this to the Y is 6 minus 2, 6 minus 2. Do some math here. That's going to be 2, and that's going to be 4. Now, that's the position function. Let's draw this, remember, at 0, 0, and just kind of see what we come up with. So at 0, 0, we're going to go 2, and we're going to go to 4. And there you go. Now, if we had some graph paper, they will look the same. Believe me, they will look the same. All right, so that is kind of how you would how you would draw this position function. Well, let's look about, let's kind of concentrate our attention on the length. Because the speed or you know how much we're given, because that in real life we're looking at currents. I mean, we're we're kind of looking at currents when we look at the weather. We're saying, okay, what does this all mean with the weather? The weather, uh, the meteorologist is telling us. Well, they have these vectors, these lines, and they go in these different directions. And what's going on? And maybe some of them are a little bit longer than others. Well, that means there's more uh, speed or magnitude than these. Okay, so let's do what we call a uh, magnitude oops magnitude of our vectors um, I want you to also make sure that this is what we call length so magnitude or length now there's no direction here no direction so there's no direction with magnitude I can say 65 miles per hour three feet per second that's with no direction so magnitude or length is no direction is involved well here's the notation the notation that we're going to use the notation has our vector but we are going to use kind of like it looks like absolute value bars it looks like absolute value bars. It's not absolute value bars. It's something that we call the magnitude. So we're going to take the square root of our um, kind of like our position. So we're going to take the uh, our position. Okay, we're going to take the that we're going to take the square of these, and you're going to see why. This is our notation. So I want you to understand this. When we find the magnitude, if we kind of look at this example up here, and remember we found this to be our position vector, well, what if I wanted to find the magnitude of that? Well, you would take these values and just put them boom and boom and square them. You would take our position function or vector, I should say, and put them down here to find the magnitude. And that is kind of what we are trying to do. So I guess let's just use this example. 
Why not? Why don't we use this example? Since it's here, we can use it. So we know that 5, 4 is our position function. Let's find the magnitude here. So this is like your x, this is your y. Remember, this is kind of like your two vectors here. So if I say I want to find the magnitude of this vector, well, I'm just going to go x squared plus y squared. Well, I'm going to go 5 squared plus 4 squared. Now, to kind of make the math a little bit easier, that's going to be 25 plus 16. 25 and 16. Just to kind of make the math easier if you uh, don't have a calculator, <clears throat> if, you don't have, if you don't have a calculator on hand. So what does that all mean? I do believe that's the square root of 41. Now, I'm going to leave it as the square root of 41 because I don't want to break it down. I mean, we can if you want to, but you don't have to. But the square root of 41. Now, that means that for this vector, so I think we, drew, we did draw it up here. For this vector up here that was associated to this one, that means you're going to have the square root of 41 length. For this position vector, you have the square root of 41 for its magnitude. Okay? So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. <clears throat> well, let's kind of go over a couple other things here. And then we do some examples. Let's do what we call a unit vector. A unit vector, think of the think of the magnitude as being one so a unit vector is think of like the unit circle you know think of like the unit circle it has one think of a unit vector as that you're taking the magnitude the magnitude and it's equal to one this is what we call a unit vector now, what we're going to do with this, this is this is going to be helpful because, remember, the magnitude tells us the speed or length. The unit vector says that, well, we can have a unit vector of a magnitude of 1, but we can multiply that 1. We can multiply that 1. We can multiply that 1. And that's kind of what we're going to do with this, is that we're going to multiply this by a little bit. Okay. Here we go. What we're going to do is what we're going to call we're going to call horizontal and vertical. Oops, I spelled vertical wrong. Vertical components. Horizontal vertical components. Now here's what this means. I stands for our vector from zero to one. J stands for our vector from 0 to 1. Now you're probably thinking, what the heck are we doing here? When we do vectors, we like to think of them as a horizontal and vertical component. For vectors, we are going to use I and J components. These are components. Components mean like the description of what you are demonstrating in that direction. So I remember I is not the imaginary. Don't don't get get rid of imaginary for now. I in this case is not an imaginary. No imaginaries. Think of the I and J as kind of like they were components of going horizontal and then vertical. It's a way to kind of represent our vectors. And here's an example. So let's draw our x and our y. Well, remember, here's our x and here's our y. Think of it this way. If I go from 0 and I go out to 1, this is what I call, this intersection is what we call i. Well, what if I go from that same direction, or that same thing, and I go up there, and I go to 1? Well, this is j. And I'm hoping that you understand that these two are the points of the, um, of the vectors there. So let's take this idea and start taking our vectors and adding them in component form with the i and the j. 
And here's what I mean. So if I had a vector, let's call that with a slash b. Well, that means that I'm going to have a component, a component one comma zero, plus b component with zero comma one. Well, do you remember that these are called i and j? So this is going to be i or a or a and i plus b and j. Remember, these are up here. These parts are here. These parts are up here. So A goes with I, B goes with J, the J component. So here's an example. If I said our vector is five comma, oops, or five comma four. Now I want you to be with close attention here. Do you see what I'm using right here? These are those like inequalities. That means I'm using a vector. What if I was using something like this? Parentheses, that's a point. Okay, be careful with those two descriptions. If I use parentheses, that's a point. If I use those bracket or inequalities, sort of something, that's a vector. So this is a vector of five comma four. Now, how do you represent this vector? Well, remember, this is like your A and your B. So I'm going to say that this is 5i plus 4j. And if I were to graph this, this would go 5 horizontal and 4 vertical. Into my paper here. Vertical. <laughs> okay. All right, let's do some examples and then we cut this video. Okay, keep that right there for you. All right, let's do some examples and then we get you on your way here. So let's put everything into detail form. All right, let's go ahead and say I have my first vector, let's call it 2i plus 3j. And I said that W vector is this 3i minus 4j. Fine. Um, vectors, add the two vectors together. So let's add the two vectors together. Now you're probably thinking, how do I add these two vectors together? Well, remember, you're just taking the components. So you're going to write it like this. Um, this is 2i plus 3j plus um, 2i plus 3j, 3i minus 4j. Okay, here's what I want you to do. The i's go with the i's, the j's go with the j's. So the i's with the i's, and the j's go with the j's. So the i's are going to be, well, that's going to be 5i. And the j's are going to be, well, isn't that negative j? This is the result. So you're adding the same components, the same i's, then the same with the same j's. All right? You're adding the same i's with the same j's. Well, let's kind of look at this again but why don't we go subtract why don't we subtract this time so you might want to kind of picture this a little bit so you might want to write this down like this then subtract be, be careful here okay be careful here so you're subtracting be careful with the negative so we're going to take this and yes the negative is going to go, it's going to distribute. It's going to distribute. So this is going to be, um, if we figure this out, <clears throat> so we're going to go 2 minus 3. And I'm hoping that you can figure that one out. And then you're going to go um, 3 minus oops, positive 4j. Now these all have i's on them. 
And that's going to be what? Is that negative 1? And this is going to be 7. And here is your vector. And if you want to, you can re rewrite these as 5, comma, negative 1. They're just the same vectors look like that. So you can write them like this if you want. But it does mean that this is your i and this is your j. This is also your i and your j. Okay. Well, since we kind of have hopefully this down a little bit, remember we're working off of these two vectors here. We're adding and subtracting. What if I wanted to find the speed or find the magnitude of both of them? What if I want to find the magnitude of both of them? Can I do that? Yes, you can. So here we go. So remember the magnitude is the square root. So what's the V? So we're going to go. 2 squared and 3 squared. So that's 2 squared plus 3 squared. And then if you did something here, you can go 4 plus 9. And I do believe that's uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Square root of 13. Well, let's find the same thing with W. So let's take the same thing. We're going to go 3 squared. We're, oops, oh, be careful here. See how I put positive? You could put positive here. But remember, our j is negative 4. So you might want to put a parenthesis and go negative 4 squared because you're taking that whole thing and squaring it. You're taking that j and you are squaring it. And so just kind of be careful with this. This is 9. This is going to be uh, 16. And that's going to be 5. So there you go. You have the position. Now you have the speed. Now you have the speed. <clears throat> okay. What the next part I want to do with this, the kind of in this video, is actually I think we're going to call it straight here. But I want to kind of add a couple things for you to do on your own. What if I wanted to take uh, my vectors and multiply by 3 for vector 1? Well, that's going to be this vector. So you're going to go 3. And I guess you could do it this way. Kind of show you that what I'm trying to sh uh, attempt to do here is that I'm taking my vector above, and I'm just going to multiply by a scalar, a scalar of 3. And that's just going to multiply each of the components by 3. So you can do that with also a negative 3. You can also do that with 1 half. You can also do that with 0. So I want you to try some of those, and then... Um, hopefully that makes more sense. There is more to come on this. We're not over, but this is probably enough for now to kind of get the idea about going through uh, going through some vectors. And just to kind of come back to the beginning is that remember a, a vector has magnitude and direction. Now, if you only had, let's say you only had a magnitude, it's not really a vector a vector has to have both you've got to tell a person well i drove 65 miles down the freeway but what direction did you go well people say down well you might assume that's the south depends but if i just drove 65 miles on the freeway that's a little different so hopefully that this helps and like i said you have to might go through this a little bit of time and you know put some practice into it and you might have to watch this video again. And that is just how it goes. So hopefully that you got a good grasp on this. I will see you in the next video.